uh, yeah, Ron Broom, and I think uh, the town hall is a very important building in the history of Bishop's Castle, which I think is important to be preserved, and it's interest in history of the place as well. And we'll find out what's, what's there, and I know there's some old uh, jail cells there, and I think you're disturbing all those and finding some evidence of what's been there before. We are now standing where you guys would never have stood before. We're in the ladies' loo. If you want to get your own back, you can move down there. That's the, that's the gents down there. Interesting factor about this lower level is there are two things that people have always thought about. A, it's been a toilet for a long time. B, before that, it was a jail. There's another factor come in that it was actually a residence before it was a jail. The basement was used, I'm not sure whether it was one or two, um, probably just one because it's not very large here. But it was residence, then it was a jail. Um, the other interesting factor is that uh, levels wise, uh, if you look at the windows at the end there, from the outside they're about yo high, which is sort of normal height for windows, but in here they're down at uh, knee level. So we've assumed that the floors have been built up, um, and we've had confirmed today, uh, which I didn't know, but locals probably would have done is that the, the road has actually been built up. Um, so what we are going to do is to put in the corner over there a disabled lift. So therefore this, which was the male toilets entrance, will now be the new public entrance. So therefore uh, disabled car space at the end there and then access through here. So our floor level is based on the current road level. So we can't we can't play about with that. We'd like, we'd like to make it lower. In fact, when I did um, original sketches here, I did make, and funnily enough, that was the original doorway, which you can see, the vertical joint. That's where I was going to have the entrance. So by pulling it downhill, you can consequently drop the floor. Um, but the trouble is, by doing that, it reduced the size of the kitchen. And we really needed to get as a larger kitchen as possible in here. And that's the kitchen. And will there still be toilets? I'm sorry? Will there still be toilets at some stage? You're standing in one of the unisex toilets. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in fact, you're... Move for the last. Uh, unfortunately, you've been split by a partition because there are two here. Yes. Two uh, small yes. unisex toilets. Yes. You're in the disabled toilet. Um, that is the... Which was the system, the, the town water supply. Mm. Um, is going to be the plant room and storage area. We unfortunately um, had our plans rather scuppered in that the traditional form of a floor like this, which we thought we were going to experience, was um, a spine um, T-section steel with vaulted brick. And then you have a, a loose lime finish with a flag on the top. We were really looking forward to finding that underneath the timber floor, but when we took up the timber floor, we found that somebody in the past, unbeknown to any archive statement, replaced it with reinforced concrete. And in the end, the only answer was to take the whole structure out. So we will then replace a structure that's more, more uh, accommodating to the the uh, underfloor heating, the relaying of flags, and trying to get in um, services as well. The installation of the clock was obviously subsequent to the construction of the building. So when they put the, the, uh, the clock weights in, they carved a great slot down the building to get them in. We're finding out that the weights themselves are supposed to be an eight day clock, but the drop wasn't sufficient for eight days, it was only sufficient for seven and three quarters, which throws out the winding um, strategy. So we've dropped the floor in that area to try and bring it back to eight days. When we took off the plaster of the staircase area, uh, we found that that's evidence that this building actually built off an original external wall. So if this was the location of the guild hall prior to this building, it would have stopped short of 
this building. There would have been a passage of some sort down through there. And whether it's actually the passage that was there or it's just a construction under the staircase, the, the, floor, of, the floor under the staircase is actually cobbled. So we're theorising that it was the original passage through there. <laughs> the rest look like it's the same right. Now this object are our reasons. Have to so you can see this is, this is the window I was telling you about. That the beam finds its purchase. <laughs> but the original frame still there. You can see where the, the steel inner frame was. And they basically just shoved a few bricks in it. There's a complete mystery to this staircase. Um, there's one school of thought that it's a contem contemporaneous design construction. And there's another that, that originally the staircase was much deeper. And this would have been a gift from somebody to say, oh, you don't want that rubbishy old staircase. I've got the perfect example. And then they shoehorned it in by carving out the beam. Um, I tend to favour that approach because, again, it completely ignores the arch that's running through here of the doorway. I'm, just, I'm not going to go into the history much because you probably know much about the history anyway. But just to recapitulate, that it's built around 1750. That's what we do know. We don't know the exact date because the archives for those years are missing. But we've got the archives before and after, and there's no sign in those archives of a major bit of expenditure. So it's going to be in the middle. And we do have a plan for a replacement town hall of about 1745 by a chap called William Baker. There's a very well-known um, Midlands gentleman architect, shall we say. Quite how much input he had when the building started is difficult to know. Like a lot of architects at that time, he probably just scribbled on the back of an envelope and said, yeah, do that, and away they went. And probably came to decide a couple of times if that did. But we're almost certain that he was responsible for it. That there's <laughs> evidence to say that there was a building on the site, because a lot of the specifications for the building that never came about talk about reusing timbers, they talk about encapsulating the system, which we'll come to at the very end of the talk, um, and they talk about replacing the building as if there's one on the site already. What we can tell from the archaeology now is that that building was not quite the same size as this one. No. So we get some idea of, of a different type of building with a gap in between it and its adjacent neighbour, which is why I said don't look at that wall at the top end, <laughs> because yes, that's all the clues in it. Was that the encroach building behind us, would that not have been there when this skilled hall went up? That, that building was definitely there when this came up. Yes, but not when, the, not when the original. As, well, far we don't, as, we we, know, as far as we know, we, but we don't know when the original was built up. We don't know right. when the original was there. One thing the stripping of the plaster has demonstrated is how radical this building had already been repaired in the 19th century. If you look at the windows, the windows here are Victorian or Victorian replicas. They're not the original Georgian windows. Um, one way of distinguishing between those two is simply the size of the panes, this is slightly bigger than your average Georgian, mm -hmm. and then you've got additional bits on top of your bottom sash and below your uh, mm -hmm. top sash. Yeah. They're partly because they need to strengthen the junctions in the timbers that make up the sash, because with the bigger plates of glass, that's heavy. If you actually take the glass out of that, you could probably lift that up on one little finger. Mm -hmm. It's very light. Mm -hmm. As soon as you put the glass in, there's a lot of weight mm -hmm. and it starts to warp. If you go around Bishop's Castle and look at Georgian windows, you'll find they don't have those. And they usually have more panes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they usually have four. Yeah. So they, we know these are Victorian windows, although they look very crisp and they could be Victorian replicas. But these are probably put in in the 1880s, when we know that the building had a very major restoration. What we didn't expect to find, and this was probably important structurally as well, um, an advantage of stripping the plaster, I have to say, we didn't know that the lintels had been changed. Mm -hmm. The lintels are concrete. Mm -hmm. If you look there, you see the concrete lintels? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you continue the line of the lintels, you can see new bricks put in either side. Yes. Yeah. So they were the length of the timber lintels that preceded yeah. the concrete yes. ones. They were almost certainly rotten because of problems in the roof. What we've got in here is a rather neat link between the archaeology, 
and the research. There's a very good team of researchers, volunteer researchers on this project. And I hadn't seen them until this morning for quite a while, but they came up with some nice drawings from the 1880s works, which we weren't aware of. And they tie in perfectly with what they found in this room. Mm -hmm. These are all tiny bits of archaeology. We're not finding a new Roman pavement or anything like that, mm -hmm. you know, or Pompeii. Mm -hmm. We're finding little bits about a building that you won't expect to find uh, unless you actually, yes, unless you've got this fabric. If you look at your feet, you will see the floorboards there go that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the floorboards go that way. Mm -hmm. And here, there is a floorboard being put in. Mm -hmm. At this end, mm -hmm. that floorboard stops and you've got a threshold piece. So the dividing wall was there? The dividing wall was there, and you see it going up the wall? Going up yes. the wall? Yes. Yeah. And then on that side, you've got something subtler. This partition here, that side, is different than that side. Right. And if you look down at the floor, you'll see that the posts, the studs that make up that, go all the way through the floorboards. Mm -hmm. So they're probably contemporary with the floorboards. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side, there's a, there's a sole plate on mm -hmm. top of the floorboards. And that's the same as the, the wall behind you there. So right. this room was smaller, right. with a doorway there. Now, the plans they discovered and showed me this morning show exactly that. They show this room as being oh, smaller. Right. So so that's the big room there. That, that was all the way into that huge room oh, there. And this is a smaller room here. And then that also explains why that window over there is so crudely cut into the fabric. If you look here, that brickwork, oh, yes. it's not just bad brickwork, it's a far too short to be bad brickwork. They've been chopped to get chopped this off. frame in. And this would have been a blind window originally, so it wouldn't have had a window. It looked like a window yeah, from the outside, yeah. but it would have been blind. But so now when, it's the same height as those. And not that, now it's the same height yes, as those, yeah. but not of that one. Not, not of yeah. that one. Mm. But when they extended this room, mm. probably for the town council, they put this window in. Yeah. So all the all tiny bits of architecture and archaeology, mm. and you've got little bits here as well, yes. odd bits of stud work. So it all adds up to you know, exemplify mm. the story of the building. Uh, well, I'm very impressed by the detail they've gone into, and uh, <laughs> the, the historical aspects they've looked are, looked into are also very good. I think the reason that this is so important for the area, and I live in Clun, I'm part of the Bishop's Castle and Clun Tourism Group, is that it's going to be a fantastic information centre for the whole area, that includes the Clun Valley as well. I was very impressed and I think when it's completed it'll be a terrific asset to Bishop's Castle. It'll be a friendly place to go in and a welcoming place to go in and I think it's very good. As well as being an information centre where people can come in and find out about walks they can do and history in the local area and see it as a, as a resource for the community, I think what's, what's fantastic is that they've taken a building which, as I've just seen on the tour now, is really a very, very difficult subject to um, bring into modern use. And I think many people would have looked at it and said, well, with the original building as it is and modern day usage, wouldn't it just be better to knock it down given the difficult site that it's on? And I just think it's a credit to the people of Bishop's Castle and to everybody who's worked on the project. They've said, no, this is part of our heritage. It can be brought into modern day usage.